I'm going to talk to you about the Earth, you know, because I think this is something that unites us together. This is a portrait of Socrates that you can see in the Louvre. And Socrates was the first one to imagine how the Earth would look like if you were seeing at it from space. And actually, the description that he gave in a dialogue with Plato was extremely accurate about the color, about the aspect of the Earth at a time where humans had no idea how it looked like. And on top of that, uh, Socrates imagined that the view of the Earth will not only, um, I would say, uh, wander us, but will also provoke a mind sh shift when we discover how it looks like. And actually, it took a lot of time to get this image of the Earth from space. It took 25 centuries. This image, uh, which was the first image of the Earth fully lit, taken from space, is called Blue Marble. It was taken in 1972 by the astronaut of Apollo 17. This was the last crew to go to the moon and the first time that the Earth was fully lit. So they took this picture, which became the first picture of the Earth fully lit, and it was also the last one. And uh, until recently, it was the only photograph of the Earth, and it was therefore the most reproduced photograph in human history. Uh, on top of that, this photograph arrived in 1972 at a moment where people were very concerned about global environmental problems, but people had no idea that the Earth was a finite world. With this picture, people understood that we were living in a finite world, and it was beautiful, it was like a spaceship lost in the cosmos, and people uh, with this picture, decided to create the global environmental movement, and this picture helped a lot the leaders at that time to provoke change, which is the topic of this forum. Unfortunately, the very powerful impact of this picture vanished over time, you know, and after time, we were all used to see this picture, and it did not provoke the wonder that it provoked back in 1972. Uh, and myself, I was looking for a way to make this change I would say, life-lasting. And uh, 20 years ago, a friend of mine offered me this book called The Home Planet. And this book actually is a book of photographs of the Earth taken from space with quotes from astronauts. And these quotes are absolutely poetic, and they all speak about global consciousness, planetary consciousness, no boundaries, we are one. Uh, and uh, I was very surprised to see that astronauts, which are mainly um, military uh, people or scientists were uh, writing so poetic things. So I started a quest interviewing astronauts to understand what happened to them up there. And uh, I found a book called The Overview Effect, which was actually analyzing from a psychological point of view what happened to these astronauts. And uh, the writer, Frank Wright, found out that 50% of the astronauts in space fall in love with the Earth, and this was a life-lasting experience. And this overview effect was provoked by silence, fear, because it's a very um, fragile environment when you are in space. If you have seen Gravity, the movie, you, you can actually feel it. Uh, they are uh, in, uh, without gravity, so this is also provoking a, a very nice state. And with all these three elements combined with the beauty of the Earth that you can see rotating in front of you, it creates all the precondition for a mystical experience, which is called the overview effect. And when I found that out, I was like, how could we... Uh, uh, generalize this uh, effect not only to the 500 people that went to space, but for everybody in mankind. That was my quest. You know. And uh, as I was looking for that, I was a researcher in mathematics in the US, and I was looking into virtual reality, but this was not really something that people could uh, use massively because it was really a research, very expensive tools. So. Um, it, uh, at that time, in back in 98, I come across another project which was very related, imagined by Al Gore. In 98, Al Gore was, let's say, recovering from the negotiation of the Toko Kyoto Protocol in December uh, 97, and he had a dream one day, uh, looking at the blue marble picture which was sitting in the Oval Office in, uh, in his office. And looking at this picture, he said, oh, this picture is uh, at that time uh, uh, 20 years old, and he was looking for a more updated picture of the Earth, and he couldn't find one. And he said, hmm, why don't we send a satellite 
uh, on space and take a picture of the Earth and display them on the Internet, which was just nascent at that time. So he charged NASA to develop this satellite at that time was called Triana, and uh, he charged them to deliver it before the end of year 2000, which was the beginning of the new millennium. So they had two years to complete the mission. They actually did it. They built the satellite. It was almost ready. But in order to do that, it was quite a complex mission because if you want to have the Earth fully lit, you need to be on the Sun-Earth axis. And if you are too close to the Sun, you fall into the basin of attraction of the Sun. And if you are too close from the Earth, you fall into the basin of attraction of the Earth. And in between, there is only one point where the forces are balancing out. It's this point called L1, Lagrangian point one. And this point is 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. Despite that, NASA actually built the mission to go there. But as I say, he had a bad idea, which was to run for presidency against Bush. And if you remember the story, uh, the election did end pretty bloodly um, with this recount in Florida. And when Bush took the office in January 2001, he was extremely pissed against Al Gore. And the first decision he took in the office was actually to cancel the Triana mission. And myself, I was really waiting for this mission. I wanted to work for NASA to promote these images because I thought with these images, we could provoke this overview effect. So as I was very sad, you know, and I wanted this vision to come along, uh, I decided to write two books uh, called Siècle Bleu. Uh, and in 1,000 pages, it took me 10 years to write that. I was imagining what kind of revolution these images would provoke if they were existing. And uh, it's called uh, the, the Blue Revolution. And actually, this book will be republished in one month. You know. And uh, so it took me uh, 10 years until uh, 2012 to, to write that and publish that. And a few uh, months after, uh, I came across a very obscure blog. Um, and in this blog, I learned that the satellite would actually be launched secretly by Al Gore uh, and Obama. And it was the camera that was filming the Earth was embarking into another mission, which was going to L1. And uh, the, nobody was speaking about that. It was very for uh, space geeks that this was announced. And during two years, I didn't mention that to anybody because I didn't want Republicans to block this mission because they took over the Congress during the Obama administration. Um, so in March uh, 2015, three years ago, uh, this mission took off. It was launched by uh, Elon Musk's uh, SpaceX uh, rocket, and uh, it took its way to uh, this Lagrangian point. And one, the new mission was called Discover. And in July 2015, uh, three years ago, a second picture of the Earth was released. That's this one. It's not anymore the same picture with Africa. You can see here it's uh, Central America uh, that is at the center of the picture. And this picture was tweeted by Obama, uh, commented in a few newspapers, but no enthusiasm was created by these images. And, you know, I was a bit, um, you know, disappointed by uh, this. And, uh, but NASA said that in September 15, they will release a new website with a lot of images and a lot of content. So I was waiting for that. And when they released that content, I was very uh, sad because they only released photographs of the Earth, 10 per day, uh, roughly, and that you could browse in a website. But this was really like looking the same picture over and over, and it didn't provoke any emotion. Uh, at that time, I was writing a book for the, the COP21 uh, conference uh, about uh, climate change and uh, change in general. And uh, uh, I was very busy, but in the back of my mind, I had, you know, we need to do something with this picture. And then in November 15, uh, just before the Paris Agreement, uh, the Paris attack took place, and this made me very sad. And I had a conversation with my friend who offered me the Home Planet book, and we say, Let's try to do something to put some hope to people, to create some uh, light in this uh, very dark world. And we tried to see what we could do with these images. And what we remark is that if we were projecting this uh, portrait of the Earth from different angles uh, on a sphere, as the Earth is moving very fast compared to the speed of the cloud, we could actually should be able to reconstitute the, vid the missing video uh, uh, from these uh, stand-alone uh, images. And uh, in March uh, 16, so two years ago, for the first time, very late at night, 
we managed to produce the first video of the Earth filmed from space. And we cried. We cried a lot because we found it was very beautiful, but at the same time, we were waiting for this experience for a very long time. Before I continue and explain you all the things that happened after, I would like you to experience this vision of the Earth seen from space. So we'll turn off the light. Imagine you are 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth and that uh, you are looking at the Earth, you have the sun in the back, you are in light wetness, you are like an astronaut, and during three minutes you will look at the Earth turning for the first time in history. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, these images actually were taken two days ago uh, from space, from that satellite, which is when you look at the sun 1.5 million kilometers away, you can imagine a very little thing in the, uh, in the sky that is every day doing the biggest selfie ever. And when you think about that, it makes you very little. You know? uh, so when we released this first video, uh, my friend Michael, with whom I developed this project, posted this video uh, on uh, uh, the internet, on Instagram, and tagged NASA. I say, why are you tagging NASA? I say, oh, why not? You know? And actually, five, five hours later, we received uh, an email from NASA who was asking, how did we do that? You know? And uh, it was actually the, the head of the mission of the Discover and the Epic camera was writing us. And since that, we have been going very closely with NASA to improve these images, to understand exactly how the mission runs and uh, uh, improve this, uh, this experience. And, uh, when uh, we saw the emotion that these, these images were creating, we decided to structure this vision to actually give reality to the vision of Al Gore, which was also my vision in the book that I developed to make these images everywhere and display it on every possible screen. So uh, 
this is a picture from uh, uh, Jean-Michel Jarconcel in 94, uh, 1984 in Houston. I was, and you could see the picture of Blue Marder on the skyscraper, and that's our ultimate vision is to have it on very big building, but also in every smartphone, tablet, computer, TV. And uh, actually, this vision now is realized. Uh, there is an app that you can download. It's free. It's called Blueturn. You can go on blueturn.org. That's our, our website. We have also a Facebook on Blueturn when you can find many news. And when we presented this project for the first time at the TEDx conference, uh, I said, you know, these images are used. Please do projects with them. And we call for projects in arts, in education, in meditation, uh, to unlike global leaders. And you will see in the following picture that this actually took place you know so first of all uh, yeah here it's a picture of, uh, of uh, these images shown in different schools and kids love that and if we could create a sense of global consciousness directly to kids we will save a lot of time for this new generation to become global citizens uh, these are different artistic projects that were done with these images. Here it's a concert with a violinist on the stage of the Grand Rex in Paris. Here it's a trip-hop concert that was using uh, these videos. Here it's a show that was done this summer in Brittany with some horses uh, that were running around the earth, very beautiful. And very soon we launch what we call Blue Turn Mix to uh, invite DJs to uh, do uh, uh, spins on uh, the planet and we'll uh, log that onto YouTube and, uh, and Vimeo in order for people to dance around the planet. Um, we also uh, uh, discuss a lot with the meditation, yoga and um, mindfulness uh, communities, which are very keen about that. That's a, a, a big uh, course of yoga in Le Louvre, where they were looking at the earth. They call it Blue Meditation. Uh, it's organized by different people. And uh, we will soon be in a major movie about mindfulness. Uh, these images will be there. Uh, and by meditation, you increase a lot the experience that you have lived. Uh, this is also a picture that uh, was taken a few months ago in Tel Aviv. Uh, for the Earth Day, we managed to convince the mayor of Tel Aviv to project that on the biggest wall in Tel Aviv. And you can see thousands of people who were looking at the Earth and who are really uh, amazed by these images. And what we would like is to really invite all mayor of cities to display these images of the Earth always somewhere in one city so that people can remind where we live together. Um, this was another picture taken in Delphi in Greece in an old amphitheater and uh, outside, outdoor, it really creates an amazing experience with uh, the Milky Way, the moon and uh, the image of the earth. It's very profound what uh, you could uh, feel in there. Uh, we also inspired some political leader. Uh, last uh, year, it was presented to Emmanuel Macron and uh, Nicolas Hulot at the COP25. The French ministry, actually, they like this project very much. And it was in front of the Make Our Play Great Again uh, hashtag from, uh, from Macron. Uh, Ségolène Royal, who was a former ministry, she was also very touched by this project. And uh, we were invited to present it for the first anniversary of the Paris Climate Agreement. So, Global leaders are very touched by that, you know. But, you know, among our global leaders, not all of them are very nice, you know. And, of course, when you do nice things, you know, you provoke... When you do change, the system reacts. And one day I woke up with this, you know, in the newspaper. Donald Trump wants to shop an orbiting space camera that monitors climate change. That was the camera we were using, you know. And uh, he asked for that because some Republicans were still peace against Ice Gore to have managed to send this camera over there. So during a year, uh, we were very unsure whether these images will continue to flow. And um, actually, uh, uh, there was a debate between the House of Representatives and, um, and the, the Senate to, to know uh, which, uh, if this will be in the budget or not. The budget is very minimal because it's over there. And uh, the new NASA administrator had to decide whether he will shut down that. He was named in June, and he was a climate uh, skeptic. You know? And after two weeks at NASA, he was so convinced by the evidence of climate change that he decided to recognize that this was caused by humans, and he decided also to continue this mission. So for the time being, as long as Trump doesn't put 
pressure on him to close that satellite who are fine, you know. And the funny thing, after this was uh, uh, confirmed, we received an email from Al Gore's team who wanted to hook up with us because they thought that we went very further than Al Gore vision and we are now working with them and normally in December we'll release a common tool with them to mix Blue Turn with uh, a lot of content about climate change. This will be presented normally uh, in a big event organized by Al Gore in December. So the story is not finished. Our dream to put the Earth everywhere is still there, you know. And, you know, when you look at the Earth, uh, there is a message here. I mean, the Earth doesn't need to be protected. It needs to be loved, you know. And once you love it, you know, everything will follow. So we hope that Blue Turn will help create this world, help create change, and thank you very much for your attention.